In this video, we discuss the differences in trading NFTs on the Solana blockchain versus the Ethereum blockchain. As usual, nothing in this video is financial advice. We are not financial advisors. The NFT space is incredibly risky, so always do your own research. If you like the videos, make sure you hit the like button and smash the subscribe button. It really helps us out. So easy, you've been wanting to do a video where we talk about the differences between ETH and Solana. I think that there are a lot of obvious differences, but then there are some that are not so obvious. So why don't you lead the way? You know, wh what did you kind of want to discuss today? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of people have been asking too, and even in the Nifty Discord, uh, they've kind of come up for and nicknamed for me as Easy Eats now. Oh, uh, so they're kind of throwing some Ethereum. shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shade. they're kind of lighting me up. Um, and honestly, like I miss it because I genuinely have a preference towards Soul and Solana trading. Yep. It's just faster. Like that's the biggest yeah. thing. Like you've seen the way I trade on ETH. It's a hundred percent like high frequency. I'm all over the place. I like to get in and out of a position extremely fast, literally just trade volume. And it's so much harder on ETH. Like I did that gas WTF thing. Yeah. I've done like 1.7 ETH in gas on the one ETH challenge. So, so I want people to really understand this for a second. Okay. So this is an Ethereum thing. So we did a one Ethereum challenge, which was where everybody <laughs> took one Ethereum in a wallet. That's what you start with. The wallet says one Ethereum. And from there you start trading it to see who's the best trader and who ends up with the most. So Easy's wallet right now is worth less than one ETH. So he went from one ETH to less, right? And on that journey getting there, he spent 1.7 ETH in gas. So if you're like, how does that math add up? That's how it works when you have gas fees. And apparently when you trade as much as he does, because that's a lot of gas fees to get to 1.7 ETH. Yeah. Yeah, and I think on every one of the 1ETH videos, we've kind of talked about it. Uh, it's just been like a very – I can't figure out the market, to be honest. Like it's so – it trades so much different. So like even if on Magic Eden right now, if you want to go to like the top popular collection over 24 hours, I think it's Hawk site. Yeah, Divan Air, Degen Hawks. This is a good Hawks. example of like what volume looks like. And this is actually even slow in my opinion for like an actively traded project. Um, yeah, that first one right there. Oh, it's, oh, this thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just the most popular. So even just looking at something that's the most popular, click the activity tab. Sure. We're for me, this is really slow. Like this is not giving good volume at all, in my opinion, right now. And on ETH, like this is consistent sales. So that's one thing that like I've been really trying to figure out is like when I trade volume, I'm looking for a couple hundred sales in like a 10 minute period, like really flying. Um, and even then it's like Looking at something like this, where it's still holding that 24 hour popular volume, it's on 33,000 soul, which is a ton. Like that, plain and simple by itself, is some really, really good volume uh, overall. But looking at the smaller time frame is where I make a lot of my trades. Like I'm a scalp trader, I really enjoy taking big swings and small windows. And even like this is, in my opinion, a little too slow to get in and out of positions. Um, for a lot of other people, that's not true, especially on longer time horizons and especially on ETH. Like if we open up OpenSea and look at good volume, I think you would agree with that. It's like if you get five sales every minute over a three hour period, that thing is moving. Oh, yeah. I mean, five. you're talking about a lot of sales, right? Five. That's 300 sales an hour. Um, for five hours, that's 1,500 sales. I'd say that's some decent volume for sure. We saw some crazy volume on the Kevin derivatives, and we saw some crazy volume on this project that came out today. What's it called? Wanderverse? That yeah, has, Wanderverse. Yeah, that has some crazy, crazy volume. So this right here, what this volume on the Solana project looks like, it looks like uh, like an Ethereum project that's good but has been out for a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. almost like a Look Labs. Maybe Look Labs probably doesn't even trade as much as this, but um, okay, yeah, so that's the crazy part. So, even this too, like this is actually getting some good volume right now if you look at that activity. Mm -hmm. But even this seems a little bit slow, which sounds crazy. Like, if you open that up to 50, over the last hour, we've seen 50 sales. That's pretty good. Over the last three is 50 total, 25 in the last hour. For me, that's still not enough on Solana to make a quick trade. Um, so, that's like the tough part. Like, Trying to get used to that same volume on ETH, I just it's difficult for me to hold anything because I'm so used to these types of movements. And especially when something hits secondary, you do see good movement there. You see some really fast movement on ETH, which is good. But like my concern is 
I just can't time it. And that's the hard part about me trying to figure it out because sold, there's no gas fees. So looking at something like this, you're dealing with instant transactions. You're not getting front run. Either the item's available or it's not, which it's just a totally different trading kind of mindset that I've been really trying to have to get used to because it's not like I can just dive into any listing on OpenSea and trade it because it just has volume or it just hit OpenSea. The thing with Solana NFTs and especially Magic Eden is that collection one has to sell out before you can trade it. So even like collections on ETH where you can sell on OpenSea and actually have an idea of where the floor price might be if you mint this right now, there's none of that. It's a lot more speculation on Sol. So when that project hits, I'm almost waiting and looking, trying to figure out like what's happening, what's going on, how quickly it's moving. And if you see less than a minute for that time and the entire page for 25 listings is less than a minute, that's really healthy volume. As soon as that starts to slow and you start to see two minutes and three minutes from the last sale, that project's almost dying. Whereas I'm trying to still get a hold of that on ETH and figure out what that movement really looks like. For sure. And so what you just talked about, I think, is like the kind of differences in volume, right? And so the two things that come to mind for me would be the difference in volume on Solana versus Ethereum, and that's a direct response to the difference in gas fee, where in Ethereum, you have what people consider to be very expensive gas fees and slow transactions. And with Solana, you have no gas fee at all and fast transactions, right? So removing that barrier makes high frequency trading possible. And it makes it so that monitoring volume and just paying attention to where the money's flowing to it, it's kind of the main thing. I don't know. Do you have a comparison from your previous trading experience, like any particular market that that rem reminds you of? You mean more so the ETH market or soul no, market? There, no, like outside of crypto, like anything when you were trading equities. Yeah. Oh, like for that. sure. Like option trading reminds me of Solana. A hundred percent. It's like instant go big, go home type of thing. You're either looking to scout like on a same week expire option, which in kind of short terms, you're looking for something that's going to fluctuate in price a decent amount to give you a higher premium on it. That trading volume and kind of the speed in which returns happen reminds me a lot of the Solana market because something will hit secondary, go under mint, which is like an option stock trades down as soon as you buy that contract and then flies if it goes up in that short, very short time window. There's a lot of volatility. So I, I prefer the volatility. That's kind of the crazy thing is some people enjoy trading that some people can feel that they can read that a little bit better and honestly buying shares really feels like eth like i know we hate comparing equities to nfts but that's kind of what i see it as is like solana is like the option market it needs a lot like the traditional equities i think that's a fantastic comparison because the second factor that i was going to bring up is that a lot of projects on eth people actually believe in okay so i can always sort of tell when someone's like a dgen or when someone's maybe coming from and i'm not throwing shade at solana right but like we've talked about the <laughs> fact there's like five projects on solana that the solana people say are good you know what i mean so it's like um there's sort of a different mentality it's more of musical chairs in solana like options trading like you're talking about where it's like you know buy it sell it buy it sell it but if you buy like i talk about this a lot i don't even ha i don't even own it i clearly i should own it but like links dow on ethereum right links dow if you buy links dow you're buying it because not because you think it's going to go up by 25% by the end of the week, but because you think that this is something that's going to be good long term. If you buy Gary V's V friend, if you buy, uh, you know, a Pixel Vault asset, if you buy anything right on Ethereum that's got a, an actual builder and a story behind it, it really can be looked as a long term investment, no matter who you are. It's it's, got, it's harder to poo poo that stuff. I think. I think if you're yeah. poo pooing it, you have a lack of understanding of what it actually is. Whereas I, we can just make this whole show me making fun of these solana nfts right like we can do i mean i'm joking oh, I, I mean one of the comments too here is the shout out kevin he said are there rugs on options as frequent as soul and it's like that's that's hilarious like is it and, obviously and it, not right I it's mean. obviously not but the thing with options is like one bad announcement it goes to zero which like on soul it's like same thing the, the devs go to sleep after sellout and that thing's going to zero so fast yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something to think about. So we got, all right. And I, as I look at these, right. 
I just want like I I want to know which ones are going to emerge. But all right, back to ETH versus Solana. So we talked about volume and the way people trade it because of the difference in gas price, the non-existent one for Solana. We talked about the sort of um the structure of the project. Let's talk about teams and how on Solana a very high percentage are uh un are do undox teams, correct? Yeah. So we're starting to actually see that trend shift. We are getting a lot more Docs teams like uh, Michael Jordan's son actually dropped that six bull there, that project, which is interesting, um, or six rings. They dropped that. So that's an Wait, interesting Michael project Jordan, with the Docs team. Yeah. Michael Jordan's Marcus son Jordan. dropped this. Marcus Jordan yeah, dropped Marcus six Yeah, Marcus Jordan rings. dropped this. So this is interesting too because they actually say the collection's 5,005. It was a Magic Eden launch pad. They had to cut supply because it was selling slow. It was, really? uh, I think, like one, yeah, one five, one six min. I, th I think it was barely sub two. It might have even been two barely, and it's now up four x. The thing with these though is their bags are much heavier. We've we've had people look through the transactions here. These and the space runners kind of look like there might be watch trading going on, but I digress. So th this is one though that docs team technically, um, Magic Eden now is requiring teams to dox to them and even holding funds in escrow. So there's some things coming out of all this because people are right. Like there were so many rugs over the last three months that it, it got to a point where like people stopped minting for 48 consecutive hours because no one knew if a project was even going to get on secondary because they were just deleting everything. It was wild. Um, but same time though, like D gods is, is uh, doxed. You have a few other bigger projects that are doxed too. And it seems like those are really the ones driving progress here because one, they're docs, so people buy into it out of trust with with the rugs on Soul. Two, you have a lot of those people still building in this sort of sort of first Solana bear market we're really experiencing. Like some people would say November had a mild downturn, started December, I guess, a little bit, but January was a pump for both ETH and Soul. So Soul really did not pick up even remotely until like August, September. Um and that's even younger than ETH. So like a lot of people now, we're starting to finally see these emerging products or like projects. Whereas on ETH, you have projects that's either started, have gone through some downturns, have kept building through those and have progressed to the other side to kind of solidify themselves with these blue chips. So it's, I think a part of that plays into how young Soul is. I think the other part is you are right. Like it's an undocked team. It's, it's a lot easier to just kind of run away. That's the biggest thing is the runaway part. My question is like, why are you undoxed? And, you know, like the biggest thing that it says to me is that you're not willing to put your reputation on the line for this, probably because you don't, you want the upfront money, right? The primary sale, the upfront money. In no other business do you get all the money upfront and then you have to build it afterwards. In all the other businesses, you have to build first and then you finally can get some money if you're lucky. In the NFT space, you get the money upfront and then you're obligated to build. And so if someone's on docs, they're just telling me that they want to be able to slink out at any time. Time. They just want to be able to get out of the project, out of the responsibility, just whenever they feel like it. And, you know, that's just the first thing that I think about when it comes to docs versus undocs. There's still undocs teams on Ethereum, but it's becoming much less common and, and much less acceptable. Yeah, for sure. So, and that's always the tough part, too. Like, to your point, like, which company has really gotten paid? for not delivering anything. And that's exactly what NFTs kind of do. So well, it's, it's crazy. It's like it's venture like, capital funding, but then you owe your investors sure. and they're breathing down your neck. So if you're just some docs team, it's just not going to happen. I'm going to let you keep running. I will be, I will be right back. No, no worries. Um, yeah. So really now also kind of taking a look at some things and what I think is really the interesting part here with it all is let me actually also share my screen. I'm going to kidnap this from PO. We're completely deterring from the whatever was going on here solana's the best it's the only no i'm messing but really what we got to take a look at here is diving into some other the kind of other projects and what i really think is interesting and where i think we're going to see a lot more growth from soul is right within the game kind of aspect of it this is a project i'm extremely excited for i'm a huge basketball fan as many people know so bracket x by overtime is where i think we're going to actually see a lot more of that real life kind of crossover from nfts uh, and this is something that I actually think is going to play out really well because of how good internet games went. Um, that was an interesting thing to see the community kind of build and get some IRL crossover into Web3 and just kind of see how that's played out and the success of it and the interest. Like seeing the community backing now has me so excited for these kind of real life crossovers. Um, and yeah, well, welcome back, P.O. Uh, shout <laughs> out Micah G, that. by the way. 
<laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, I wish I actually had an opportunity to say that. Though. Look at me. I'm the captain now. But this is something I'm actually pretty excited for. Like, if you look at the payouts on this, this prize pool is a great way to drive mint funds, secondaries, royalties, and actually back it into something that like people are familiar with. If you've ever done a bracket and actually filled out a bracket for March Madness, they've now gamified it and actually given you like you'll be able to remember your brackets now, which I think is a really cool concept. Is it is it Amen. March Madness yet? Do we have time to fill out brackets in the Nifty Discord? We still do. We still do. So I we think brackets have not officially released. Yeah, I'm excited for that. So they haven't officially released. This is the same idea, though. An NFT is your bracket. You'll fill it out. It'll be assigned to the metadata. It's locked in. As soon as they lock that in, they remove the update authority or whatever it is to stop that. And once it's done, it's done. Then I think the secondary is going to be a ton of fun because it's like if your bracket is doing well, I'm curious if you can sell that good bracket in like the round of 16 for someone else to win it for holding. So like it adds an extra layer of gamification, like cashing out early. And the overall winner, like I think buying winning brackets and like perfect brackets are going to hold value, which is like kind of a cool idea. That is, I mean, that's crazy. Like if you're lucky enough to guess the bracket properly, you should get some value on the NFT. Yeah, we got to we gotta look into doing that for the Nifty Discord with a prize, of course. Uh, that that ought to be a, a, a thing that we do. I think that's a good time. So I just looked at my portfolio on Soul. We floored everything. I'm, I'm clean. Everything. I got a, just under 10 Soul, no NFTs. I, I own zero yeah. Solana NFTs right now. I don't honestly I don't think that's a bad decision it's not a bad place to be I'm a huge soul fan and that's the worst part I'm sitting here like if I'm betting on a project right now honestly it's got to be like the one and only Tayo just with Soulport Tom we talked about this a 180 floor we're seeing dragons pull back pretty Mm. hard these are 2x the dragon floor right now or 2x the supply and then if you actually look at like Borioku dragons this is interesting because at 180 floor on those dragons are sitting at a let's see what we got a 280 floor with half the supply. That means the market cap for Tayo has officially flipped it. So for me, I'm sitting here like, okay, we know that now Tayo is technically a docs team. Like that's really, really interesting because the person backing it has business experience, has delivered previously, and is actually delivering now. So it's like for me, I think the robots are gonna flip even in floor price, despite the 2X supply, just because of the factors we've been talking about, like what makes this major difference? And we're finally seeing this growth in Solana that's showing like the builders are being rewarded, the docs teams are being rewarded. Yes, people still mint absolute trash consistently. Yeah. But like at the same time on ETH, we do the same thing. Like these just dropped. It took these a while to sell out. I minted three of them. Uh, but this is you good saw that And you were like, yeah, I'm going to totally mint that. Exactly. Some 3D <laughs> alligator bullshit. I'm sitting here like, I mean, this is how you know I'm bored. Like their roadmap <laughs> is earn tickets, win prizes. Like what the hell is this? It's you know, like this is that's what it is. Awesome, right? Under promise, over deliver at its finest. What the hell is a ticket and what are the prizes I'm gonna win? Um, but <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. But I mean, yeah, like I love to see things get built that actually, uh, you know, are, are real things, which like that tire robotics theme uh, thing seems like. Look, I can't, I'm not going to be able to buy any good Solana NFTs for 10 no. soul. Not even, not even close. Uh, there may be one. This is probably the only project soul under cuts. 10 I would take a bet on. This is the, but even that it's 80% of your bag. Like I'm not putting 80% of your bag into anything in a declining market. I, no? I, I don't want to buy, like I'm not really buying buy that anything. many NFTs right now. If I'm on a good whitelist for uh, ETH, then I'll buy an NFT. But what I'm thinking is, right, like I've got, I've got the 10 soul back in the wallet. That's basically what I started with. I'm thinking about putting it on FTX Earn. And so, yes, FTX is our sponsor. Yes, this is a sponsor pitch. But I, do- I dove deep into the FTX products that, um, you know, are being offered today. And there's actually different products between or over the weekend I did. There's different products uh, between web and mobile. If you have the mobile app, you can earn yield on fiat or cryptocurrency. It compounds uh, actually hourly, it seems. And it's any assets that can be put into the FTX, like any assets that they support, you can earn yield on. So I'd recommend if you wanted to like, you know, do this and support us and also uh, use a really good product like FTX, I'd recommend registering on your mobile phone. 
I wouldn't do it on the website. I would open an account on your phone with the FTX app on your phone, and I'd uh, use the code the Nifty, which is our code. Um, you, what will happen is every time you buy crypto, you're going to get free crypto uh, as long as you, you spend at least $10, and you passively earn this yield in the app on whatever um, you know currency that you're holding there, whatever asset. So I'm thinking that I'll send the Solana to my mobile FTX account and just let it chill there and get, it looks like about like between five and 8% yield. It is variable yield, but it seems like the minimum is 5%. So at the end of the day, I think that this is one of the sharpest things to do in a bear market is to take your assets that you're not looking to deploy and put them onto the mobile app people are asking about ftx in canada i would say try it i don't know what the story is i know that it doesn't work in new york but it is international our european friends are good to go with ftx and again i'd recommend the mobile app the code you pop pop in there is the nifty which is our code and then when you spend over ten dollars on crypto you're gonna get free crypto so i did i didn't fully understand the earn part before when we were doing the ad reads shame on me i should have like really <laughs> dove even deeper but i didn't realize there was a difference between web and mobile on mobile you earn passively on the assets that you keep in the app so it's definitely pretty good uh well i mean it's really good obviously so check that out back to the show um you know, just wanted to pull up Ethereum and, and see what's going on here. So I was cleaning out my bag a little bit, uh, just a little bit, not a lot of it, but just a little bit to try to get some, recoup some ETH. I sell this thing and then you, t like literally <laughs> I sold the thing. I, I have two, so I still have one, but I sold the thing. And then the first thing that you say to me when we're on video off air is, oh, did you see the Look Labs announcement? I was like, no. <laughs> that probably explains why it sold instantly, like why I listed it. Flew. And my email popped up within two minutes that it sold. Uh, so, yeah. So here, People are here saying is. this is going to be the uh, the Mint Pass for uh, Beanie's next drop because he's doing a free drop or something. Um, yeah, that's pretty wild. All right. Well, I still have one on the <laughs> trading wallet, and I'll put that back into my wallet or something. I don't know. This is stupid. But um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bro, even quirkies are flying today. There's a bunch of random stuff that's blowing up right now. It's so hard to tell what is going to do well in this market right now. It's actually like it's bloody murder to figure it out because like in a perfect world. OK, this is going back up. What is there a little pump in the market right now? Um, Bro, I'm saying I sold this today for 0.185 because I was like, I just need to get liquid and scalp. Like I have to get back to scalping just to get back over one. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to scalp on on ETH. Right. But. I mean, this thing should be worth way more than it is. I don't know what the supply is on only a thousand. What there's uh I think there's more than a thousand. Click on the picture. I think there's five k. Five k. Okay, but a bunch. Yeah, of so actually, staked. a ton are staked. There's like eighty four, eighty five percent staked. I mean, I don't know. Quirkies have been flying all day, and I I can tell. Yeah, those are mooning. Yeah, the salon audience is probably just wanting to. What the hell, man? <laughs> Point seventy five. Wow. Oh my god. It just it literally just doesn't stop, and that's something that I was very surprised on, like. What caused that pump? I mean, honestly, they're a pretty good PFP, which is the interesting thing. Yeah, and Alan, I'm just so since we decided that we're um that we're gonna piss off the people that <laughs> came for Solana, now I'm actually gonna piss off the people uh, that like Ethereum. I'm pissing everybody off, and I'm talking about Book Games, the Gary V NFT right here, and uh, I don't know if you guys are seeing it. Look at that floor, 0. 0.452 floor, baby. Ask Ooh, your, there you go. Ask your boy how many book game NFTs he's got. 21. 21. <laughs> 21. 21. The casual 21. That's how many I have. So I'm thinking I'm going to sell at least one today to take some of that off the table in an uncertain time. Watch, Russia's going to retreat from Ukraine. The Fed's going to make an excuse to print about a, a bunch of money. And th this was the absolute bare bottom. And that's where I, I you know, that's where you floor everything. <laughs> And, oh and then my God. Yeah, someone just said, bro, again with the books. People just absolutely hate it if we talk about uh, about books. It's games. so wild, bro. The hatred towards the books is even like any Gary V conversation is like taboo here. It's like, no, we're not talking Gary V. It's not going to happen. It's pretty wild.
All right, one last thing. Someone said talk about Loser Club, or someone like told me to look at Loser Club if I haven't heard about it. I've literally been the biggest champion out of everybody Ever. that has a show. I, I can comfortably say that. Nobody hyped up Loser Club more than me. Not that I was like hyping it up or whatever, but um, I love this unique ownership 5K already on 10,000. You know what I think might happen? I think... I don't think that many people have seen what Loser Club NFTs actually look like, what the um, what the PFP looks like. I have seen it because a couple people in the Nifty Discord are already sporting Loser Club NFTs as their PFP. And my opinion, my subjective opinion, is that they look really, really sick. So I wouldn't be terribly surprised if these pump after reveal. I'm not guaranteeing that that's going to happen. I own two of them. I didn't add to the bag like I originally planned to because of the very uncertain market conditions and the fact that every whale that I talk to is being insanely cautious right now slash selling off their stuff and going to cash, not even going going to ETH, but going to cash. So like for me to just ape in to more loser clubs when I already have two, didn't really want to do that. But if the market's going to have a little pump across the board tonight, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if loser club pumps after reveal because people realize that the artwork is super, super sick. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, I, think also, I mean, I'm excited for loser club reveal. I'm still holding one. Um, the other thing I'm trying to get here too, is like, I, when I said it earlier, like I'm probably going to end up with like a good, honest 10 dead friends. Like, Oof. I don't know what it is about that project, no, but legit, they're down man. sub point three. That's the thing. Like, I don't know how you don't bet on Betty and dead fellows in general. They've continued to build like in my eyes, that's an OG project. And even that at like sub three seems like a good value. Somebody swept 250 of them today. So like of dead fellows. Is that dead friends? Yeah, something like that. The number was cr dead fellas. So for me, I'm just buying like some rares. I got a, a wolf under point three. I had a I bought the top on the monkey in the interim. But like at this point, sub sub point three, like I honestly want to try to chase one of each species because like I feel like there's some value in that itself. I'm excited overall for that too, um, and just kind of like what that's gonna look like. We should also, by the way, have our loser club reveal right now. All right, let's do it right now. So let's see. I'm trying of to course, reveal mine. Yeah, of course, what mine looks like. That's the most important thing. I'm pulling a little Nick here. <laughs> um, and please don't look at those other things. Yo, what? What? I got, bro. Let me see. Bro. What do you got? Wait, wait. Let me see. I'm going to your I thing. I just shared. Stop sharing. Go to mine right now and look at this on my actual wallet, not the one ETH challenge. Yeah, yeah. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, oh, oh, if you don't know why I'm freaking out like this, whoa, that's insane. If you know, you know, anybody that knows NFTs that's looked at Ethereum properties, that is a looks, yo. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh my. Let's go. Son, where'd you find this? Oh my God. This is oh ridiculous. My God. Whoa. This is like. Damn. All son, right. Jesus Christ. That this? is like. Wow. That. Well, you have some decisions to make, amigo. Yeah, you bro, have, I have no to idea decide. What to do. It's the only devil I've seen, too. Like, this thing is crazy. Gold samurai armor. 0.001. Like, this is. Bro, these all look so good. Like, I'm looking in the Discord. These all look so good. Okay, there's a lot of devils, but none like yours, buddy. You got a crazy... Yeah. They look they look good, huh? Is our they Discord good, going ape shit right now? Absolutely about wild, Club? bro. Yeah, going They're going to pump after reveal. You heard it here first. You heard it these here going first. wild, bro. No one knew how good they were going to be. No one saw the actual PFPs. Bro, the other one I sold is a floor one. There's, It's like a 90% attribute. Talk about luck. Wow. Oh, All right. Bolt, the other two I sold. Damn. We got to see yours. Yeah. Refresh I mean, that metadata. I'm refreshing it, but that's insane that you... Wow. That's yeah, pretty I'm crazy. All right. So I got this one. Looks like a floor guy. Yeah. Excuse me. Actually, this one might be pretty rare too. All right, well, bro, we they have... all look so good. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So look, we got Vampire, Big Fro, and Nervous Laugh. Bro, That's this is the only Samurai Yellow armor. Oh my god. I just filtered by Samurai what? Yellow. Yo, it's the easy, only... easy. iPad face has to be rare. Yeah, a gold iPad face too. Let's that go. That has to be rare. That has Let, to be rare. Bro. Oh my god. If This, if this is the is... old... <laughs> bro, I'm oh. losing it. This is the best pull I've ever had. Look, this is... <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh. Let's go. Oh. Damn, son. Where'd Damn, you find son. This? Damn, son. Where'd you find this? I might re rupture <laughs> my Achilles with this shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Someone said rigged. I wish. <laughs> Are you kidding Same. me? I wish. Um, oh, my God. I'm wow. losing it, bro. This is OD. This is crazy. Let's go. Wow. I'm looking. Someone just offered 0. 0.32 on it. Like, obviously, I'm not taking that. Grow up. Grow up. Uh, Grow up. Wow. So. That's we both pulled dope ass loser clubs. This is pretty cool. If anyone thinks this is rigged, let me tell you, I wish, I wish that it was rigged, uh, but it's not. People are saying pump that bag. There's nothing that this one YouTube show is going to do to like the life's work of Javon, the art. Like literally, this guy's been working on it so far, so long, and someone pops into the chat here and says, "Pump the bag." Um, Michael, which one's 10 ETH, mine or, or Easy's? That's yeah, gonna be, bro, if I get 10 ETH, I'll fucking vomit. And then I can finally pay my taxes. The tax man won't come after me. Life yeah. will be good. So are these pumping from here right now? What's happening? I kind of am inclined to buy more right now. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, these are, these are flying right now. Um... I'm not going to buy into this horrendous pump. Even Like, I knew that this was going to happen. I, I this literally... Is, I'm, this is crazy, bro. Like, this, yeah. these look good. Yeah, I, I was saying this on the show this morning. Uh, no one knew what these looked like. And now everyone's like, oh, wait, these are insanely dope. Okay, look at that. Um, yep. Okay, I just yep. listed it. Let's see what happens. At what, a 10? 9.69. Got to go with the numbers. I'm gonna go just under. Is it a one? Like, is it a one of one? I can't figure it out. I mean, it's an uncertain time in the market right now. So, selling for ten ETH probably oh. isn't the end of the world, even if it is. So wait, what? I mean, I'll be ecstatic. I'm just looking right now at like the floor, dude. They all do look very good. Dingo just bought. Oh, this is a one of one, is it not? Yeah, that's yeah, a one of one loser. Yeah, okay. that's a one on one. So yours is not a one on one, but yours is rare as no. hell. Yeah, someone just sold that for two, so I probably got to drop that down to be honest. So Mike Damn, is doing I'm what bad. he does best right now. Micah is um, buying rares right after reveal because other people don't understand that they're rare. So that's what Mike is doing right now. He just typed that he sniped in a crown. I'm not gonna buy into the pump because I've known that this was the good shit. Um, great to see Loser Club pumping. Shout out to Jay Vaughn. He deserves it. This is an incredible project uh, that I've been talking about for quite a while, but I didn't excessively uh, bring it up because I didn't want to make it seem like they had paid me or something, which they obviously didn't. Uh, what was I going to say? I knew that this was going to pump after the reveal. I'll wait for the pump to end before I think about adding to the position, and I'm just gonna hold my two and obviously not sell them. But uh, yeah, this thing, this thing's pumping pretty hard. Very cool. Someone said not Bro, my vibe, not my vibe or taste. All right, dude. Like this is like really so, good. So but, yeah. Somebody got a one of one in the Discord too. They got oh. a a dinosaur. Let me see what the you got to pull this up because the uh, lizard boy twenty is the uh, the lizard attribute. Lizard boy twenty. Let's uh, let's see. Lizard boy is the the attribute. Yeah. Yep. So it should be under on the left side. It should be under body. Body. We got body. Lizard boy twenty. What do you got for me? No, it's not going to be by now. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I like that. He's got some boba. You know. Yep. He's got some boba. That's pretty cool. Um, someone just told me mine is the number eight rank on compass. Wow. But, but how's that possible if there's more than eight one ones That's what I don't know. Okay. Uh, this, well, but they're not done revealing though, right? 14. Yeah. I think it's cause they're still revealing. So this is probably going to be top 50. I hope 
depend because I wonder how many one of ones are there. That's yeah, that's a good question. You know what the crazy thing is? So check mine out, right? See this cat man thing right here? <laughs> uh, you, you see that on the bottom right? How it says cat yeah. man? Nick uh Jay Vaughn's nickname is um Catman Cool Sweater or something like that. And that Catman signature trait is listed as super extra and 0.34% oh, have it. So I've got the Catman signature, I have the phone head gold, and then a quasi rare bubble coat. And if I pull up Catman Extra, the floor, okay, so the, the Catman Extra is not that big of a deal. The floor on Catman Extra is 0.57 uh, so far. We got a brown paper bag there. Let me look at the, the phone head trait and just take a look at that. And then from there, we can get a little bit of an understanding. Your pull is absolutely, absolutely crazy, though. Bro, pure luck. Because I did sell some loser clubs pre-reveal, and it looks like I kept the rare one. Yeah, and so look, phone head is going for a half ETH right now, too. So mine is not that rare. It's it's rare, or it's 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 not a floor loser club. Um, yes, yeah, so someone just said one like mine just sold for point three. So it's not crazy. It's not crazy, but nonetheless, it's, oh, it's, still it's a, definitely not a floor. A, what four X? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not selling it. I'm gonna hold it. No. But um, I'll scoop up floor ones when the when the it calms down when we know what's going on with the world a little bit better. Uh, I feel like we've been due for a for an NFT bear market, so we'll see. But um, wow, we got some decent pulls with this stuff. What's, what's going on with this thing? Do you have this, Loveless City? No, bro. So I was debating buying it on a trading wallet, and I passed. So it's a mm -hmm. Crypto Von Doom project. Yeah. It looks like it's going to give you more airdrops for it. It's interesting because like, you do still have – it shows too, like being a personality in this space and having people back you – it's going to pay regardless of a bear or a bull. Like people want to buy into people that they feel comfortable with. Yeah. And this is a great example of it. Like he's crypto Von Doom's continuing to build off this too, which is great. Um, so I'm, I, I don't know enough because I don't know if it's a metaverse play. That's kind of the hard part. Yeah. I'm holding it. It seems pretty decent. Someone said loser clubs art isn't great and not really pumping. Okay, buddy. It's uh, I, in my opinion, the art's good, and I hope it isn't pumping because I'd rather it just kind of be chill. So if I want to buy it, I can just kind of casually do it, and I don't have to buy into a pump. I don't really want to do it. Someone said I watch Nifty for advice and walkthroughs on NFT trading with Pio now. That's probably a bad idea, buddy. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, all right. Well, anyway, this show went off the rails, but I'm not mad about it. Always love having easy on. Sign up with our FTX link on mobile. The code is the nifty. If enough people uh, do that, then we're going to get Sam Bankman freed on the show. And that'd be pretty cool because he's like a super trader genius and founder of FTX. Uh, and follow Easy on Twitter. He's very active posting his trades. If you want to follow someone trading, it ain't me. You follow him. Uh, and that's at Easy Eats Bodego. So thanks, everyone, for watching. I watched Nifty hoping I'll do an Italian accent. One day you're going to have to keep waiting. <laughs> uh, see, see you later, Easy. Great, great chatting with you, bud.